Hey, it's me, Professional Bike Crasher. While working on my previous run, I asked all of you what challenge run I should do next, and the level 1 run won by only 2% against the Tree Sentinel run, which, spoilers, will be next. So the question of this video is, can you beat Elden Ring at level 1 while being bad at the game? A rune level 1 run. This run was requested by a viewer on the Black Knife Assassin video, and some of you might know that I suck at this game, so I was pretty worried about this run. But luckily, the person that requested the run gave me a tip that would help me a lot, which was going to r slash 1 bros. Here I went and did research on what equipment I was gonna use. There was this amazing mega thread that helped a lot. You'll find out more about the equipment I used throughout this video. So what are the rules? I read that there are many mixed opinions about a level 1 run, such as no status effects, no summoning, etc. You can make it as hard as you want or as easy as you want, but because I suck at the game, my rules were very simple. You start at level 1 and you end at level 1. As long as that number stays 1, I beat the game. Of course, when starting new game, I chose the Wretch class because it's the only class that starts at level 1. Feeling a bit lazy, I reused Patrick and made him green just so I could do this. I jumped off the cliff at the grafted sign and wanted to test out my strength fighting the soldier of Godric. And I can safely say that the wretch class is just too overpowered. Now it was time to get my equipment. I first got my and went on my way to Fort Ferreth. Here I got Radagon's Source Seal to boost some of my stats. And while I was there, I also got one half of the Dectus Medallion. Next up, I got the Reduvia, but because I didn't have enough Arcane, this was sort of my second choice. Let's just say that I had something else in mind, which I thought would be even stronger. I made my way to Redmain Castle to get the Flamberge, and also got the final ingredient to my weapon part of the build, Flame of the Redmains. Sadly, I quickly found out that this Ash of War has been nerfed into the ground. This used to be a very overpowered Ash of War, but not anymore as of patch 1.08. Nonetheless, I still wanted to try it. Because I was already near Fort Gale, I also grabbed the Strength Heirloom. Thanks to the new patch, Flame of the Red Mains wasn't really a good option now, so I had to come up with a different idea. I was pretty dead set on the whole breaking posture thing, so I decided to use the Lord Sorn's Greatsword that I picked up before as a secondary weapon. My plan was just to start jump attacking the bosses. Due to currently only having one talisman pouch, I couldn't effectively use the Lord Sorn's Greatsword. However, I was about to change that. It is time to fight Margit. Margit was actually pretty easy. It took me only four tries. I did upgrade my weapon a little bit after the second try. I put Flame of the Red Mains on my sword to try it out. And to be honest, it did pretty okay damage against Margit. And with that one boss down, imagine getting defeated by a level one walking green screen. Now I know why he's called Margit the Fell, because he fell off. <laughs> <laughs> Laugh, please. Before Godric, I got the first Smithing Stone Miner's Bell Bearing and upgraded my weapons. I also got some summons, but I never used them, so I won't talk about them. Also, I just wanted to say that I f***ing hate birds. Now, Godric was easy as hell. I got him on my second try. Because the Reduvia was still out of the picture, Flame of the Red Mains was a very good alternative for a more ranged approach. Poise damage was not broken, but the mix between dual weapon jump attacks and Flame of the Red Mains is very effective. I broke his posture multiple times, and with this, Godric down. I got the second Smithing Stone Miner bell bearing at the Seal Tunnel, which I forgot to record, and upgraded my weapons a bit more. Time for the dog, which was surprisingly the hardest boss until now, but this was usually because of my bad timing or multiple attacks hitting me at once. Nonetheless, I still got him after 5 tries. I did deal a lot of damage, but that is probably just because of its small health pool. I did the usual Moongrum bamboozle and went straight to Renala, which had absolutely nothing against me. I did her first phase in one go, and her second phase was just jump and attack. The only reason it took a bit longer is because I missed some attacks due to me being a moron. 
on. But up until now, early game bosses are really just easy. But that was about to change. Time for the Draconic Tree Sentinel. And from this point forward, bosses were simply just gonna one-shot me. So after a handful of fair tries against the Draconic Tree Sentinel, I changed my plan. First, I got the Opaline Bubble Tier. And of course, during my research, I came across the level 1 run from Iron Pineapple. And got the Poison Mist Incantation and the Two Fingers Heirloom so I could use it. I went back to the Draconic Tree Sentinel for a rematch. I didn't want to give up just yet, so I tried to fight him multiple times without the Poison Mist. I seriously thought I could do it, but after another 30 minutes, I grew a bit impatient and gave up. I defeated the Draconic Tree Sentinel just by using Poison Mist. And you might wonder, why not use a Summon, which was indeed allowed, but I wanted to wait till a certain point in the game, which is very soon. After entering Lanedale, the next boss was of course Godfrey. And I've only recently come to the realization that I've been pronouncing his name wrong. I used to say Godfrey instead of Godfrey, but back to the boss. Shiny Godfrey is usually not that difficult, but because I'm not used to using jump attacks with two strength weapons, I got very greedy and died a few times. I usually attacked when I shouldn't have and got hit, or dodged at the wrong time and got hit. There is also this stupid hitbox with the rocks he kicks out of the ground but that's also just my fault for rolling into the wrong direction. And with this run, everything is extra punishing, so I really need to be cautious with my movement. Still, I got him after 8 tries. To prepare myself for the more difficult bosses to come, I made a little detour by fighting Radon. And because this is a level 1 run, I summoned the whole squad. I fought Radon like the gimmick boss that he is. I simply wanted to reach Nocron or Nocron to get the Silver Tear Mask and Merica Scar Seal so I could effectively use Reduvia. And because Blood Loss apparently skills with Arcane, the higher my Arcane is, the better. But yeah, even with the squad, Radon was pretty difficult. My dodging skills were pretty shit during this fight and I was still only a two shot. I even tried to play it as the ultimate coward aka summon everybody and simply run away. And because everyone can be summoned an infinite amount of times I thought this was gonna work but no one of Radan's spells would always find a way to get to me just when I wasn't looking. So I grew some balls and fought him head on with the whole squad. Which caused me to die many times just by me being a two shot target. But after 90 minutes I finally got him and made my way to Nocron. 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 <laughs> and made my way to Nocron or Nocron. I don't know how to pronounce it. I simply beat Mimic Tear's ass by giving it no weapons. Yet pranked Bozo and got my Silver Tear Mask. And while I was there I of course got Merica Scar Seal as well. At this point I decided to do Ronnie's quest so I could get the Black Knife T summon. I'm not gonna go through the whole process. I'm just gonna talk about the bosses along the way. To be even able to talk to Rani, I first had to defeat Loretta. She wasn't hard, got her on my second try, so I won't talk too much about her. I did use the Rotten Stray summon, but he was more of a distraction. And yeah, after Radan, I just started using summons. I actually wanted to start using summons at Morgoth, but because I already summoned the squad at Radan, I thought screw it. I talked to Rani to continue with her quest and got her the Finger Slayer Blade. Then I went to the Carrion Study Hall to get the Curse Mark of Death. However, there was this shitty ass boss standing in my way called the Godskin Noble and I wasted almost 30 minutes fighting that thing until I noticed that there was no fog anywhere and that there wasn't really a boss health bar showing up. At that moment I realized that this bozo was probably just optional and indeed it was. Wasted time for nothing so I just continued the quest. After making my way through Noxtella until the part where you have to fight other blade I went to upgrade my Reduvia. So I got all the necessary summer smithing stones and upgraded the weapon. I fought Invader Blade and forgot to record it because I have 5 functioning brain cells and made my way across the lake of rot. And after jumping into some random coffin, it was time for a boss I wasn't looking forward to at all. Estelle. Estelle is a boss I only defeated once. And it wasn't a fun experience. I mean, it's not as bad as Melania, but damn, I had a hard time fighting it. And as soon as I realized I had to defeat Estelle, I tried searching for a substitute summon instead of Black Knife Tish. That's how scared I was for this fight. And I came to the conclusion that I wanted to use the Dung Eater summon. However, I already got Salivus killed, so that wasn't an option. I was forced to kill Estelle. First, I tried fighting it with my Wolf Ashes, because they were the highest level I had, but uh, they got annihilated every single time. And while they got annihilated, I got violated. Get your hand off! my penis! 
So yeah, I felt like I needed stronger allies. So I got myself Lutel and Olek and upgraded them to plus three. You might wonder how I'm gonna summon them. Well, I got myself the Cerulean Hidden Tear. I had to kill this ulcerated tree spirit in Mount Galmir to get it. It was pretty tough, but because I'm a total coward, I eventually fought it the same way as I fought the Draconic Tree Sentinel by using Poison Mist. Now it was time to fight Astil again. And it went better. I tried both summons to compare and thought that I had the most success with Lutel. Tell. So I used her in the end and finally was able to defeat Estelle. I do have to admit that this final attempt was too close for comfort. In other words, my ass was clenched. It for some reason didn't one shot me with very low HP and I even missed my Reduvia Bloodblade. To make it a bit worse, it teleported away and started its meteor attack and somehow I was able to survive all of that and got him. I seriously thought that nothing could stop me from this point on. If I could defeat Estelle at level 1, then I could surely defeat the game at level 1. To my surprise, this fight excluding all the detours, took Took only 30 minutes but damn did it feel long. It was time to marry Ronnie and get Black Knife Tish. To get Black Knife Tish, I had to defeat Electo. And this fight was pretty difficult, especially for an Evergoal boss. There are even people saying that she is harder than Melania. Difficult or not, I had a trick up my sleeve to make her a very easy fight. And after dying multiple times by fighting fair, I was gonna use this trick. I simply got her in a specific corner in which her AI just broke and I could just slash her. She couldn't do anything. The hardest part though was getting her in that spot. But after several tries, it worked out and I got Black Knife Tish. Looking back, I can with confidence say that this was all worth it. I got a wife and an overpowered summon. I see that as an absolute win in my book. Oh, and I immediately leveled her up to plus 10. Now that we're back on track, it was time to fight Morgoth. Oh. Wow, oh, oh yeah, baby. Much better than I thought. I didn't want to use Tish immediately, so I first tried Olek and Lutel. Although I got pretty far a few times, it didn't really work out. It was time to stop feeling guilty about using this summon and start using it. Tish, I choose you or something. Even with Tish, this took 5 more tries, but eventually we got him. I do have to admit, me dying to him was usually because I was just close enough for him to hit me and sometimes he just switches target mid attack. So I just get hit without being prepared for it. Nevertheless, more got down. I upgraded my weapons a bit more thanks to another smithing stone bell bearing and boom, we're at fire giant. I wasn't as scared as usual when fighting him, although I still was a two shot. But hey, we got him first try. I mean, Tish just obliterated his HP bar with her blade of death skill. Now Godskin Duo. I must say it fell way more fair simply because I had a friend, an overpowered friend. This was the only reason why I wanted a ranged option in my equipment because I suck at fighting them in close combat and Reduvia did a pretty good job. At first Tish and I fought separately however I quickly came to realize this wasn't the best plan so I tried to focus on the one Tish was focusing on and it went way better but even then one of them was always going to be a pain in the ass. Usually Tish focuses on Ronald McDonald but this big mech always wants more attention or something and after many tries I could finally keep my distance from that big mech and knew that this was gonna be the one and when we finally killed one of them this fight became way easier and this led to our victory. They weren't as bad this time but damn I still didn't enjoy it. I fucking hate birds. After getting rid of the Draconic Tree Sentinel, again in a cowardly fashion, it was time to fight Malakath. I'm personally starting to think that the first phase of Malakath is harder than his second phase. His second phase simply consists of sticking close to him and dodging his destined death attack. During this fight, I used Tish more like a tank to distract Malakath, especially throughout his first phase. He always got my shield in phase 1. I don't really know what to commentate on. Personally, I think Malakath is a pretty well designed boss and definitely one of my favorites so there aren't really highlights throughout this fight. If I die, it's simply my fault. In my final attempt, Tish even died. So I had to finish the job and I did. Malakath down. Now, Sir Spamalot was a different story. This guy's such an annoying bastard. He wasn't necessarily hard, but just annoying. So many spells and when you get hit by one, you're dead. There were so many spells I had to back out of and eventually I just did. I ran away letting Tish do the work. Sometimes Gideon just ran towards me like he knew what I was doing. 
In the end, this tactic did work out, but damn, I see swords, I run. I see his weird arm gesture thing, I run. The best attack to get close to him is during Azer's Comet. This guy doesn't have a stamina or FP bar, it's just spam, 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 spam. But okay, screw it, next boss. Horalu was a pretty weird experience. I died twice because of Godfrey, but the third attempt we got to second phase, and I did my usual running away tactic. However, I was so surprised how low he was when I staggered him. Like, I think I only hit him, what, three times? But Tish destroyed his ass. When I was watching it all go down, I thought Tish was about to get sent back to Electo, but it was the other way around. So yeah, I have to admit, Tish defeated him. I was merely a spectator. It is time for Radagon and Elden Beast, and they gave me an extremely hard time. This fight took almost two hours, and it has been a while since a fight took that long. I have said before that Radagon always feels fair, and he still is in my opinion. My problem here is Tish, because she never stands still. A lot of times she just gets in my way and I just die. But I could not not summon her, because I needed her and my bubble tear. Believe me, I also tried tried Radagon alone a few times to no avail. So I just had to live with it. It cost me to die many times because for example Radagon suddenly turns around and hits me because Tish dodges in my direction. There are also moments where I want Radagon to focus on me and then he suddenly focuses on Tish and I then dodge in the wrong direction getting me killed. Also Radagon likes to switch targets mid fight like Morga does. Eventually we got Radagon though, only to die by Elden Beast's stupid Elden Stars. I was having a, a lot of fun. The worst thing is, if I just kept attacking Elden Beast while he was casting Elden Stars, I would have gotten him. But no, I ran away like a coward. I also forgot to mention that after Morgoth, most bosses had a few test attempts, because I wanted to know which fighting style would be more effective, Reduvia or Jump Attack Dual Swords. For example, during Malakath, I used Reduvia for his first phase and the Dual Swords for his second. This was for me the most effective way to fight him. But back to the fight. After many tries, I suddenly remember that all this time I could have had a fourth talisman pouch, which I completely forgot. So I bought the fourth pouch got myself the Feridian Amber Medallion that lost Marga drops to add more stamina and the Claw Talisman to increase jump attack damage which let's be real I should have had from the start it then only took two more tries to defeat Radagon and Elden Beast in my final attempt I learned from my previous mistake during Elden Stars and just kept attacking the Elden Beast and with this I delivered the final blow I defeated Elden Ring at level 1 while being complete ass so to answer the question yes you can beat Elden Ring at level 1 while being bad at the game. Heck, if I can do it, I have a 100% faith that you can do it as well. This was pretty fun to do. I used a way of combat that I never used before. So if you're up for the challenge, then I highly recommend trying this run. You can make it as hard or as easy as you want. So yeah, next up is the Tree Sentinel run. Also sorry for the delay, New Year happened and I went on a little vacation for a few days. So that's why this video was delayed. But hey, we're back. If you made it to the end, I want to thank you all for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, share, put on notifications, whatever you want to do. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Shall we? My fair consort eternal.